I feel like Ron Burgundy. Uh, I don't believe you. Uh, hey guys, uh, I think this is a YouTube audience. Um, we are live. We're supposed to be live on YouTube now. We're waiting for the Facebook video to kick in. Uh, so we'll be doing that here promptly at 1130. Um, just a little teaser. If you hadn't already seen, we're going to be talking about uh, stairs and how that affects the design of the house with one of our amazing designers here, uh, Megan Malmay. Uh, so that'll be what the video's about today. Got a lot of good information and a beautiful co-host, so you're in for a treat. <laughs> Suck up. I'll do what I can. <laughs> So how's plans going? How far behind are you? About three weeks out. Three solid, weeks. solid three weeks. Does that count? Lean that take into account four. Memorial Day weekend? Yes. Yeah, I've already counted that out. Gotcha. Uh, we got our uh, second unit director over here, Blake Linton. Blake, we're waiting for Facebook to come up. You want to come in and just wave at him real fast? This is YouTube. Come on. Come on. Good boy. Guys, that's a Bigfoot sighting. He actually is still alive. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Let you guys have it. All right. Hey, guys. Uh, Josh Thomas with uh, another edition of Facebook Live, or Satterwhite Live, excuse me, on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, today, instead of my regular co-host, I have a much better looking co-host, Megan Malmay. Uh, just in case you didn't know, we're actually engaged to be married. So it is, that's uh, true. Yeah, that just happened. Lucky so him. not like today just happened, but it is pretty quick. So <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm uh, fortunate to to be uh, on video with her today. So, yeah. like I said, we're going to be talking about, like we said on YouTube intro, we're going to be talking about uh, specifically in this video how stairs come into play in the design of the house and then also talking about different aspects of stairs and stair railing. Really fun stuff. That's why they brought in the good looking girl to help get you through this. So, professional. That's right. Yes. Uh, so without further ado, let's get into stairs. Okay. So I guess we'll wait for that slideshow. There it is. Okay. So we're going to start with the stairs. I'm going to talk more about the stair codes and like just how it impacts the floor space that you have to have for them to work. and all the fun stuff um, and then Josh will get into um, <clears throat> what kind of materials we can use. What and, and specifically how it needs to be planned for ahead of time. This is not a thing that happens yes. on the fly. Yeah, actually, oops, where'd it go? Danny's trying to bring <laughs> me in when I start talking. Try to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here we go. All right, so stair codes. So I actually am not a fan of dealing with stairs because of the stair codes, um, especially in smaller houses there usually kind of difficult to work with um, and I'm going to explain why but it's all part of the job okay so the minimum stair tread depth is 10 inches Bigfoot siding Bigfoot siding we got another one <laughs> yeah Did you catch going, that on camera you're going squirrel on me yeah okay uh, so 10 inch minimum usually when we draw them on the plans we'll draw them 10 and a half inch just so there's a little leeway on the job site in case anything because you know when I draw it on the computer it's one thing but on site it might be a little different so, so we do you're little... literally talking about the, the depth of the amount of but well because some people don't understand you're talking uh -huh. over people's heads you're talking over my head so I'm just gonna bring it down to the layman's term you're literally okay. talking about the amount of space that the foot has to step on going up the stairs right correct okay correct okay so basically when you're looking at the floor plan and it's just looking straight down it's the depth that you see for each step that I have drawn right okay so um, now 10 and a half is usually what we draw for common stairs now if you decide you want to go with a log tread stair which means like the half log they have to be a minimum of 10 inches because of code um, so if you're planning to do yeah, I thought they were bigger sorry 11 inch 11 inch um, so if you're planning to do that we do need to know that ahead of time so that we can draw it like that on the plans because if I draw it at 10 and a half inch like a standard stair and then on site you change it it the stairs might not work because sometimes the stairs are so tight that every half inch makes a difference so yeah and and might not work it literally means we can't build it that way. Yeah, so, like it, yeah. it's not yeah. to code. It's yeah, not and we're not going to build something that's not to code. Right. So it's very important that 
we figure out with the stair design that you want, mm -hmm. the materials that can, you're going to use, whether it's a frame staircase with just uh, you know yellow pine two by eight and two by twelves, or if it's a log tread staircase that we get the width correct and that we <laughs> determine. You're going to go over all this, aren't you? No, go ahead. <laughs> and that we that you did, that we have the uh, the plate height or the second floor floor system height down, and there are no changes made after the fact because, like I said, it's. Any changes like that on site, and our crews aren't going to make these changes, but it really applies to people who are doing their own thing or, you know, you can't just make changes on the fly like that when stairs are involved without checking with the designer first. Right. It's, like I said, they're, they're kind of a beast. <laughs> so, okay. So then that's it for the stair tread depth. So just keep in mind, like usually on an eight foot ceiling height, plus you've got the joist above that you have to account for. So you've got roughly eight foot ceiling plus 10 or 12 inch joist, usually 10 inch. Um, so it typically takes about 15 to 16 steps to go up. So if you've got that multiplied by say 10 and a half, you're roughly at 14 foot of floor space on your main floor that those stairs are gonna take up plus the landing, which I'll go over in just a minute, how big that has to be. Okay, so the maximum stair height, so each step is seven and three quarter inch. Usually we'll try to keep it um, around seven and a half again, so there's a little leeway on site. Um, so that's part of why we end up with the 15 to 16 steps. If you have um, floor trusses, then that means that that's, you know, they're 16 inches versus the joist that are 10 inches, so then that means that's six extra inches. Yeah, six extra inches. So that's basically another step just because you went from floor joists to floor trusses. So all of that has to be taken into consideration. The next is six foot eight minimum head clearance. So above every step and the full landing that's on the bottom as well as the top which we'll show you some pictures in a little bit to kind of help explain this. Um, but the minimum is six foot eight. So you have to have six foot eight of headroom at every point on the staircase. So you'll see a lot of times on our plans, the, the stairs will have one step and then a landing and then it'll turn and start going up. It's because once you get to that landing, that log wall, as you can kind of see in this picture, you start running out of headroom and so you have to start turning and going up with the rafters of the roof so that you can maintain that six foot eight. Of yeah, so as the roof height climbs, your stairs climb mm -hmm. to continue to at least keep that six foot eight. Right. And then, like you said also, uh, at the top too, that's something that a lot of people don't think about, but however right. wide the stairs are, you know, overall, whether they're 36 Wait. inches, you can get into that? Yeah, that's next. <laughs> okay. She always tells me what I need to be saying. And, he, and he needs that in his life, for sure. Okay. Okay, so the three foot minimum width um, staircase. So that means that your landing has to be a minimum of three by three. So whatever the width of your stairs are, that's how that's the square of your landing. So if you've got a three foot six wide staircase, that means your landing has to be three foot six by three foot six. Um, that can make a difference again if you're working with a really tight space. If your you know, stairs are six inches wider, it might be okay coming into the room a little bit, but if you move them six inches further into that upstairs loft area, you might start running out of headroom where those rafters start coming back down at the top of the stairs, if I'm making sense. Or if there's a door at the bottom or a door at the top. Yeah. Yeah, so. We've got some pictures that show that, but we just have to, uh, you know, just make sure that as those stairs come down, you can't be encroaching on uh, windows to an extent, but really to doors. Uh, right. Have to have enough room to get around those. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I think that's pretty much it as far as code goes. So I'll let you kind of talk about here. Okay, so uh, so this is a, a frame staircase uh, in the uh, middle stages of it. So you can see this is, like I said, our standard staircase framed with uh, two by 12 stringers, uh, and it will have uh, two by 12 treads and two by eight risers. That's our standard construction. So and this is in the interim stage. It looks like they've got some two by fours down, maybe for uh, just construction to, to get it through the process, but um, just showing you that there. 
Um, now, M Megan, this is a good opportunity to show them the difference in width, and it's kind of hard to see, but aren't log tread stairs typically wider uh, as far as taking up floor space than frame stairs? Yeah, they're usually a little bit wider because you can see that, um, what? I don't, I don't have control of that. Danny's, Danny's doing that. Can you go back to the picture? No, 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 no. Um, so the pieces on the outside of each step, so on the right and the left of the steps going up. The stringers. The, the stringers. The 4 by 12 on the wall, uh -huh. and then the 6 by 12 rounded stringer on the outside face. So they pretty much add whatever width those are, add that to your steps, because your steps themselves have to be that minimum 3 foot. So whatever outside of that is so, so you end up with almost, like three foot eight yeah, roughly foot, yeah, typically if it's like four inch stringers okay um so this is just a good example of a finished staircase so you can see the amount of space that it takes up now you know we talked about how things can be tight and how hard it is to make things fit now this this staircase obviously has plenty of room with that angled landing like that uh, it's going to take up a lot of room so you have to make sure that when you're planning the house, and that's what Megan's for, um, that you literally have enough space in the room to, to take that up and still have enough uh, livable space in that room. Mm -hmm. uh, another staircase here. Now, I don't think this is to code. Does this look cut code to you, that first step? No, um, so the deal is with those landings at the bottom, how it's cut at an angle and cut in half, that second step, is I'm trying to see okay so the second step that one is to code because you can see where that post is that's holding up the railing there's about a six inch section of that and it does not go to a point but that first step does go to a point and that is not to code so you can do the diagonal but we have to make sure that no that inside corner does not go to a point. It has to have at least six inches. Yeah, so some of the things that we're gonna talk on today, some of these pictures are gonna be things uh, that we've seen that uh, that we won't build to, that's not necessarily to code, uh, but we're gonna show them to you just, just to kind of make you aware of that. And the reason for that, the reason for the code is, it's a trip hazard. You don't wanna turn the, if you're coming, especially if you're coming down the stairs, you don't wanna turn the corner on that top angled landing and try to hit the bottom angled landing and then not have enough room for your foot and slip down and fall. So that's the reason for that. One thing I'll show you here also um, is changing, and you would, so sometimes you don't think about it, changing your house log, especially the thickness of your house log, mm -hmm. can, can make or break a staircase also. Because you gotta, you gotta think here, on this exterior wall, regardless of the fact that the, that the landing's not to code, on this exterior wall, let's say that's five and a half inches thick, if you went all through the plan process, if you drew stairs that fit, uh, you know, whether they're framed like this or log tread, at, and you've got, and, and Megan's figuring for a five and a half inch thick log wall, if you change that log wall to seven and a half inch thick, now you've just encroached two inches into that staircase that, that can basically make it not work anymore, right? Yeah, I mean, if the stairs are that tight, then a couple inches can make a big difference, so. so so this is about stairs, but it's also about planning, planning, planning. Yes, like I said, um, like multiple times already, stairs are not fun to <laughs> deal with. That's like my least favorite part. But we plan for them, we make sure that they're right. Yes, yeah. yes. And we stick to the plan, we stick to the contract, and, and they will be correct. And if you're doing it yourself, whether you're doing it yourself as far as getting the plans done or whether we're doing the plans for you, it's very important that you think about these things and that you uh, communicate your wants and your design uh, with whoever's drawing the plan or one of our designers at any of our locations. Uh, so this is not even really a staircase, it's just a neat picture of uh, a way that you can get up to the second floor. Now, like I said, this is not necessarily to code, but it's still a neat way to... The deal is that the stairs have to be to code if they're going up to a sleeping quarter. Okay. So only if there's like a bedroom up there does it have to actually be to code. If it's just a loft with an office, they do not have to be to code. You can have like a ladder, a ladder okay. Or steeper. Mm -hmm. Learn something new every day. And that is the bedroom, so that's not technically. That's not a bedroom, that's a desk. That is? With a blanket on it. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, so this is just a good shot of uh, some, uh, same house, but of some uh, 
unique railing. So uh, we're going to talk about railing also and, and requirements for that and things of that nature. Um, so this is looks like some reclaimed uh, timbers that they've used for railing and you see there's no kind of rhyme or reason. Everything's not exactly square or the same size, but uh, you know, and people, and people get so uh, I guess caught up on the fact that everything well this is not the exact same size as this well if you got a little of imagination you're a good trim carpenter you can you can turn that into a beautiful uh, I like that showcase in the like house another log tread staircase now we don't build this design with your two main supports underneath it and your uh, half round um, coved into it but we can sell you the materials for that uh, it's very time intensive as far as uh, cutting everything to get to get fitted correctly into that. Um, so that's something to think about um, as you're designing your staircase and it's definitely a beautiful option to do if you've got the talent to do that. Um, this is just showing uh, a staircase coming down uh, in, a, in a finished house where it, it kind of comes down out of a hallway area uh, down into a half living area. Anything you want to say about that? Um, well, there are actually codes as far as railing goes. So you see that handrail going up the wall. That can only protrude up to four and a half inches from the wall. Um, and then the depth but, or the width between handrail to handrail, say there was another handrail, is um, a minimum of 27 inches. So, okay. you, so, you know, sometimes the width of your stairs depends on the minimum width between the handrails if you've got two handrails. Have two handrails. Um, and then again with the spindles on the railing, those have to be a minimum of... Maximum. Sorry, yes, maximum, like a four inch diameter sphere can't pass through. So yeah. there has to be no more than four inches center to center of those spindles on the railing. They want to get a child's leg or arm or a baby head stuck in there. I have so. actually, when I was at my mom's, when I was a kid, I, I was out on her office deck and I put my head through the rails. I guess I was really little or they weren't to code or there's a different code. And I, I got it through, but then when I went to go backward, it was stuck and she just about had to call the fire department. Wow. It was pretty embarrassing. Wow. <laughs> So there's that too. Yeah, so there's a reason, <laughs> there's a method to the bad, especially with all these codes we're going to talk about. Uh, speaking of codes, mm -hmm. this landing is not to code, is it, Mo? It is not. So earlier I was talking about the landing width has to be the same as the stairs. And you can see in this one, it's probably the same width as the stairs going up, but it's not the same width of the ones on the bottom below the landing. I do like the wood, though, that circle, circle song, song. I love that uh, look. On the treads. Yeah. Very pretty. Yeah, but this is not to code, so this is a, a slide of what not to do. Beautiful, but um, not right. <laughs> Another uh, staircase uh, showing with the two uh, beams underneath and the treads coved in there. I put this in because that railing does not look like it's to code. It looks much wider than, than four inches. Than four inches. Right. Typic typically, one, if, I guess if the treads are to code, there's no way that one spindle per tread is going to make Yeah, because they'd be at least 11 inches. Right. Unless the diameter of those spindles are well, really wide, yeah, that's but I don't, see, I don't think they're that no. wide. No, and that handrail that's something that Danny and I talked about leading into this is that handrail looks like it's way too large a diameter. Uh, what's the maximum diameter for a handrail? Isn't it like three You're inches? You're putting me on the spot here. I thought you knew that off the top of your head. I know the minimum. Oh, okay. Minimum is an inch and a quarter and maximum is two inches. For a, for a uh, for the, diameter? For the, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Okay. For the grip. Yeah, so this five inch is definitely not going not gonna to meet code. Um, here's some outdoor uh, railing. So this is, um, help me out here, is that round stock or square stock? I can't see. It looks like round, doesn't round, it? Round, it looks like. Uh -huh. um, so the, all this has to be considered for your outdoor areas as well. You know, if you're getting from first floor to second floor or from first, if you've got a raised foundation from first floor down to grade, um, those all have to be considerations as well. Um, another option here, beautiful option, this is with juniper railing. Uh, and spindles and posts, uh, so, so that's something that can be incorporated in there. Um, another option, uh, another way to do it is, you know, we've seen a few slides with the spindles going down to the treads, but this is one with a bottom rail. I think this is probably uh, the most popular way to do it because it's the, the 
spindles or the balusters, some people call them, are a uniform height all the way up because they're killing into, uh, uh, into a bottom rail and a top rail. But I would, I would venture to say that this is probably not to code uh, because of the gaps down at the bottom, wouldn't you say, Mo? Uh, between the bottom rail and the treads there? Yeah, there has to be, um, I think a six inch spear cannot pass through the space between the steps and the bottom rail. Okay. I See, I know kind of the basics of the railing part. I don't have to deal with that quite as much, so I'm not as familiar with it. Pleading but ignorance there. <laughs> I don't want to say something else. <laughs> Uh, so this is kind of a good example also. You can barely see in the top of this slide the headroom deal that, that Mo had talked about. Oh, um, yes. So, you know, once you come up on that first step, you probably, uh, and it's hard to get a frame of reference here, but you probably got six foot eight. But on that second tread, uh, you have to make sure even when you're standing on that back corner that you've got six foot eight from the floor of that second tread up to where the slope starts uh, on the roof there at the top. Uh, some more design ideas. Uh, I mean, the sky's the limit. You can find pictures on Pinterest or House or, mm -hmm. or uh, what are some other things that girls like to look at? Chances are, um, most of the time when customers come in with things off Pinterest, I've already got it saved on mine, so I've seen it before. <laughs> As you, you can imagine, I'm on Pinterest. Seen that, have you seen that bit. one? Mm, no. Boom. We just got you. Good job. Congrats. <laughs> So the, the riser on that looks like it's uh, maybe, uh, uh, what, what would you call it, like hammered um, tin or uh, decorative tin yeah. riser with wrought iron railing. More wrought iron railing uh, and showing pictures of uh, railing on a balcony. We hadn't really got into that, but that's a requirement as well. Mm -hmm. the, the pretty much the same uh, code requirements for like spacing and stuff like that are, are the same on mm -hmm. railing. Now it can have larger diameter stuff because you're not grabbing on anything. It's literally just there to hold you back. Right. Um, yeah. Another, this is a log tread staircase, a design that, that we incorporate uh, with the rounded face exterior stringer, the split round treads. So while we're on this picture, you notice that there's a window over that landing so we can behind do behind the Indian. Yeah, behind the Indian. Um, so we can do stuff like that, and the only thing to code that has to be tempered, which is not a big deal. The glass. The glass has to be tempered. It, it doesn't temper just means that it shatters into little bitty pieces instead of shards. Um, but another thing to think about if you're putting a window over the landing is once you get up to that landing, you're not actually going to more than likely be able to see out because you're gonna your head's gonna be taller at that point because you do want the header height of the window to match the door or other windows, especially on the outside. You don't want one window that's kind of higher. higher. I mean, yeah, and the look so the just exterior. another thing to consider with that part. I will say in this slide, it's it's a good uh, example of if you if for some reason you don't have the headroom at the landing, you can put a dormer above it. I'm not sure that that's what this is, but it very well could be mm -hmm. a dormer to give you that whatever height requirement you need at that landing. Yeah. Um, so there's that, and then this also shows what we were talking about earlier about the bottom step on the landing, how changing the stairs, like if you're going to add. Uh, like another course of logs or something and have a higher first floor ceiling, yeah. you can't necessarily just stick another stair at the bottom to make that work. You say, we got a dormer, we've got the headroom at the landing, we can just stick another stair at the bottom. Well, you can if you run out of space because there's a door right there. Right. So all these things have to be considered. A uh, beautiful picture of wrought iron railing uh, incorporated with round stock also. Um, we do see, see a lot of these also. This is just uh, rough cedar two by four or, or spruce, what dug fir, whatever. This is just uh, dimensional lumber railing. It's got some decorative newel posts, I guess, uh, you know, to hold up uh, for the posting as far as that goes. But an easier option probably to build for somebody who's going to do it yourself, but still a very beautiful option. Picture, of, this is probably an Angelina, so folks that are interested in that floor plan uh, kind of comes down, you kind of come in the front door and you kind of have to have a landing in front of that front door, mm -hmm. um, even though it's 
flat with the ground, you have to have that space available. Right. Um, so the Angelina is definitely a, a trick to, to design stairs around. But uh, you notice there, like like Mo said, you've got a, a handrail inside of the uh, sheetrock there because as you go up and you run out of exposed railing, you have to have something to be able to hold on to. Right. The railing is the handrail's a requirement, isn't it? If yeah, you have to have at least one. At least a one uh -huh. on one side. Uh huh. Now, this is my cool. beach house in in. Uh, Myrtle Beach. This is your beach house? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a picture of my beach house. Man, uh, that's good to know. You'll get there, you'll get there <laughs> one day. <laughs> but uh, no, this is a really neat picture of uh, some imagination used. Uh, would look like some tree branches or some sort of vine that they used to create that. And I would venture to say it looks like it might even be to code because the spacing yeah. is all pretty small there. Yeah. But you can imagine the amount of time and uh, layout and everything that goes into building that. Another one of our beautiful homes. Now, this is kind of a different design. This is uh, not necessarily a log tread staircase, but it is an open staircase. Mm -hmm. So it looks like it's framed still with our standard, uh, I would say, probably 2 by 12 stringer and 2 by 12 uh, treads and 2 by 8 risers. But it's left open underneath, and so it's kind of spanning that. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. It's uh, a cheaper option as far as construction goes, but it still gives you that open concept with still a beautiful round railing. So that's something you can do. Yeah, because during construction, don't we usually do just like a basic staircase? Yeah, no matter um, what we're going to... And then gonna... you can go back and finish it out more fancy. Yeah, I mean, no matter what we're going to do, uh, at the very least, a construction-grade staircase, which is probably this style construction, like I said, with the yellow pine 2x12s and 2x8s. And, yeah, so you can either take that out and do something. If you want to do some of those slides that we showed with the double round uh, beams underneath and the cove steps, you can pull our frame staircase out and do that. Uh, or you can go back and just dress this up. Another example almost of the same thing that we're talking about here, uh, just with a double landing, it looks like, and a bunch of round stock railing. Check out that baseboard. Pretty cool. What is that, live edge? Yeah, I like that. Stairs under construction, so it's a frame staircase uh, again, but it does have the round stock railing going up, so uh, definitely a very popular option. Um, so you see on the, the roof how it's coming back down on the, the up, on the upstairs. So that's kind of one of the things that we have to contend with at the top of the stairs as far as the headroom goes. And you have to have that landing and then this full six foot eight of headroom. So that's why a lot of times we can't push it more into the upstairs because that ceiling is coming down. Gotcha. So if the stairs are like three foot wide, you have to have a three foot square at the top with six foot eight right. headroom? Right, right. Another staircase showing round stock um, with a split log staircase uh, with a bar underneath. Uh, okay, so this is one we haven't talked about before. It's, it's another open tread staircase design, but it's not a split round. It's actually looks to be like maybe four by 12s. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, a, that's an option that you can do um, a little bit cheaper uh, because you got to think, you know, uh, the size of the material used as well as the complexity it's gonna to take to actually get it built. So square on square is always easier put together than round on round. Um, so that's something that to take into consideration. So if you still wanna have the open tread staircase look, you can have that uh, with, uh, 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 with a beam staircase. Mm -hmm. I've actually seen on Pinterest, um, it's like a six by, no, it'd have to be, I guess, 10 by 10 or maybe 10 by 8 pieces of log or square material, lumber, and they use that whole piece as each step. It's kind of hard to explain, I guess. Oh, that's but cool. It, it's, it's a really cool look because you see the ends of those big square cutouts on mm -hmm. the side of the steps. It's hard to explain. That's awesome. It's really pretty. I, 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 was, I was letting you keep the floor because I didn't know if you were going anywhere. Yeah, no, that's, that's it. That's a different design. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, and, and, you know, to that note, uh, if you have a, an idea like that or design like that, show it to us or show it to whoever you're working with. And if we can build it to code, um, there's nothing to say that, that we can't try to do it for you mm -hmm. or maybe incorporate it for you. Uh, just more exterior stairs. Um, Got a, the same requirements apply, you know, the minimum tread depth and the riser height, right? Yes. 
This is the outside of my beach house <laughs> that you haven't seen in Myrtle Beach. So nice. It's, it's pretty nice. It's yeah. like a bonus. Yeah, so you've got, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, like I said, just more considerations for exterior railing. Make sure that everything, that you're laying this out and that you're planning for this in the planning stages because uh, it has an impact not only on price and design but also uh, um, area required on the, on the uh, site. Brown stock railing under construction. Uh, I think this is at our model home in Georgia. So uh, if you've been there, you might have seen this. If not, uh, feel free to swing by and see it. But you can just kind of get it. I put this in here because you just kind of get an idea on, yes, the round stock railing is more expensive when, when that's done. Uh, but you can kind of get a feel for why that is just because of the time and the craftsmanship involved in that. Not everybody can just throw this together. That's it. Ta-da! Done. Anything else that you want to add to, to all the pictures and the things that we've talked about? Yeah, I think we've covered it pretty well. Yeah, I'd just say uh, <laughs> just be sure that we plan for whatever you're going to do um, and, and let's minimize changes on site because by that time it can, it can cause problems. So uh, just try to be aware uh, of what you're going to do. Uh, ceiling height, uh, make sure that's pretty much set in stone. Stair with stair materials, that type of thing. Which but. this, all this stuff we've talked about as far as code goes, you don't have to worry about right. trying to figure that out yourself. I mean, that's what I'm here for. I just like people to have a good idea because I've had, you know, people come in and try to fit a staircase in a five foot area and it just will not work. So we've just mostly need you to know why we need so much floor space on that main floor to have the staircase work properly. Right. Yeah. Don't worry okay. about it. Megan, Jeremy, our designer from Georgia, our designer from Utah, we can all help you with that. Um, so we'll walk you through it. But just, just so you know some background on some of this stuff. Well, um, I think that's all we've got. Uh, thank you for tuning in to another edition of Satterwhite Live on this beautiful Thursday with my beautiful co-host. Why don't you wrap us up, Mo? What's there, what do you say? I pretty much You're said You're the professional. Everything. I pretty much said everything. Hollywood is knocking on his door, guys. Yeah, I get calls all the time. <laughs> She's my groupie. Yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next Thursday for another edition. If I'm not mistaken, next Thursday is going to be Blake Linton with one of our general contractors. So that's going to be very informative uh, for somebody who's interested in how that works, uh, you know, uh, what their capacity is going to be in the, in the project. So tune in next Thursday for another edition of Satterwhite White Live. Again, Rocky Hunt, we love you. We're praying for you. Stay strong, little girl. Thanks, guys.